Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be a lot different than any other video on the channel so far, as we're going to be starting a new series, but it's not going to be taking place inside of Roblox. I'm going to be doing a tutorial series on how to create a 2D top-down shooter inside a Game Maker Studio, Game Maker Studio 2, which is a game development engine not based on Roblox. You'll be able to upload this game as an EXE for your friends to download. Um, to HTML5 to play on the web, with games like on sites like itch.io. Um, you can upload games to mobile too. However, we're not going to be getting the game like made for mobile in this series. The only issue with Game Maker is that it is a paid software, so I'll have a download description in the link below. The tutorial is free; it's a 30-day free tutorial, and you can play the game and export the game as a YYZ file so anyone else with the Game Maker Studio can play. However, if you want to be able to upload the game just as a .exe file, so just to make a game software that anyone can play, anyone can download, then you will need to buy the paid version. It's only $40 I believe. If you want to be able to upload to the web, so to sites like itch.io where you play games on your web browser, it's $100 for that version. But other than that, we're going to jump into this. You can make the game without needing to pay any money because you can get a trial. As you can see in the top right, I don't have the paid version either. I'm using the trial because I'm pretty new to this, but it's fairly easy to make a 2D top-down game. So I figured I'd make a series on it to help you guys that are interested in expanding outside of this Roblox development. So first thing you're going to do once you open up Game Maker 2 on your computer, once you've downloaded it, is you're going to be greeted with a page like this. You're going to want to click New, Game Maker Language. Then you're going to name your file. You're going to name it Top Down Shooter Tutorial, but you just name it whatever you're naming your game. This does also have a drag and drop feature, however, I would recommend to just learn GML as it's a really easy programming language. However, if you don't want to learn programming, the drag and drop feature is always there. It's really easy to use to make games, but GML is definitely more powerful. So now this is what you'll see once you create your first project. First thing you're going to want to do is we're going to open up our room. So as you can see, if I hold control and then scroll in and out with the mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out. Then if I click and drag, if I click and hold my mouse wheel and then drag, we can move around. If I scroll the mouse wheel up and down just by itself it goes up and down hold it with shift it goes left and right that's how you navigate your room so right now all we have is a black screen as you can see if I click test just lower that down it takes a minute to boot up because we're loading up a testing window right now it's just a black window that appears on our screen which obviously isn't much of a game at all. So first thing I'm going to do for this is change the color. I'm going to make the color somewhat of a greeny grass color, like so. I'm going to darken that a bit. So now it looks slightly more like a game, obviously still not even close to being a game yet though. So you have your room made with your color. Next thing you're going to do is change your size. What I would recommend is, I'm just going to make the room, I think it's 1280 by 720. Yeah, so I'm going to make my room 1280 by 720 pixels. Now if you click play, you can see this window will load up, it'll be green and it'll be more fit to the resolution of an actual monitor for when we want to add full screen and stuff like that to the game. So next thing you're going to want to do is create a player sprite. For this I'm going to be using paint.net so I'm just going to load up paint.net quick. So you can go as into detail you want with your player sprites in game art. It's totally up to you. I'm not 
much of an artist, so I'm just going to be using squares for my game art as it's simple and easy. So I'm just going to resize this to say 125, or say 150 by 150. And then I want my player character to be blue, so I'm going to pink bucket, select my blue color and fill the bucket. I'm going to do save as. I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop and call it Game Assets. So this is a folder where I'm just going to store all my assets. I'm going to make another folder and call it Sprites. And name this SBR Player. You can name these folders and assets whatever you want. By the way, you don't even need a folder. This is optional. This is just to help me stay organized. Click OK. And now we have our player sprite made. So open back up Game Maker 2. And I'm going to create add the sprite. So on the right side, you can see your resources window. First thing I'm going to want to do is right click sprites, then create sprite. So the naming format I like to use is start with a lowercase, three letters to represent whatever type it is. SBR for sprite, OBJ for object, FNT for font, things like that. So I'm going to name it SBR player to say that this is the player sprite. And then I'm going to click import on the window that pops up. You are going to go find your sprite that you just created wherever you saved it. So SBR player. And then you have your sprite. Next thing you need to do is click this little drop down menu where it says top left and change this to middle center. This is basically the origin point of the sprite and where it will rotate around and stuff like that. It's not too important since I'm just using a square, but for me, for your sprites, if you're not using a square, it may be important. So just always set it in the middle center just in case. It's always good to have it there. Next thing we need to do is create the actual player object. So I'm going to right click on objects, create object, and do OBJ player. Next, we are going to click snow sprite and set the sprite to SBR player. And now we're going to double click our room and drag our player object. Oh wait, make sure you have your instances layer selected on the left and then drag your player object into the room. You can see there he is, we can scale him if we want to. I'm going to scale him down a little bit because he's kind of big. And there's our player object. So now if we click play, you'll see we have our room with a little blue square for our player in the center of the room. Obviously this still isn't playable, you can't do anything with the game. So next thing we're going to do is be adding our movement controls for the player. So if we go back, double click OBJ player, you're going to click add event, and then you're going to add a step event. A step event is an event that runs every frame of the game. So if your game is running on 60 FPS, this step event is going to run 60 times a second. So I'm just going to make a little comment here and type movement. You can do double slashes to make comments. This won't affect your code. It's just to help you stay organized because it's very easy to forget what certain parts of your code to do as you get farther into games. So first thing we're going to need to do is check every frame or every step if the player is pressing a movement key. So if keyboard underscore check open close bracket, ORD, open close bracket, then W in quotation marks because we want WASD for movement, then Y equals Y minus 4. So in Game Maker, the way it works is top left of the room is 0, 0, the origin point. The farther to the right you are, the X value increases. The farther to the left, the X value decreases. For the Y, the farther down you are, 
the y value gets higher the further up you are the lower it gets so as you move up your y value decreases and as you move down your y value increases which is why w is lowering our y value so it's moving us up so you can just copy that little if statement and say a and then x minus equals 4 and copy both these w a s and then say y is plus 4 and then say d where x is plus 4 so now if we click test you can see that we can move the player around the screen with the WASD keys which is definitely a very needed mechanic in any game you need to be able to move your player around the screen or else that wouldn't be very fun but there you go you have your basic player movement done next thing we want to do which this part is totally optional is say your spray is a picture of a soldier with a gun you're obviously going to want your sprite to face towards your mouse so that your player is actually pointing where they shoot with a sprite like a square or a circle it's not necessary but we're going to add it anyway just for the people that do need it it's only one line of code it's very easy we're going to say image underscore angle equals point underscore direction x y mouse underscore x mouse underscore y semicolon make sure you always add a semicolon every the end of every line of code because it's not always needed but it's good practice to do it just for those rare cases when it is needed to let game maker know when the line is finished and it's needed in almost every other language so it's just good practice so now you can see when we click start and move around our player will now point towards our mouse so now what we have done is our player movement and the player can point towards the mouse so that's going to be it for this first part of the tutorial in the next part i'm going to be going over making the player shoot bullets and we're going to be adding an ammo feature where the player has limited ammo and they need to pick up ammo to restock and rebile so they can't just infinitely shoot however if you don't want to have a feature like that you can just skip over that part but the actual shooting feature will be in the next part too so make sure to like subscribe and turn on post notif notifications so you do not miss the next part i hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful and i'll see you all next time